Ever since NASA's Mariner 4 spacecraft captured the first pictures of Mars in 1965, the public has been enraptured by the red planet. Now it's easier than ever before to witness the celestial beauty that resides on the red planet with the help of modern orbiters and rovers. Mars is not so unlike the roughest conditions on our own home planet. It features the remnants of what once were volcanoes, meteors, craters, flash floods and frost. It also has a fairly hostile environment for humans, with freezing temperatures and air of mostly carbon dioxide. So here are some out of this world images of Mars. The two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos are seen in this video captured by Mars Odyssey Orbiter. The distance to Phobos from Odyssey during the observation was about 3,489 miles and the distance to Deimos from Odyssey was about 12,222 miles. This field of sand dunes rests on the complex eroded floor of an ancient crater in Noachis Terra. The dunes have gentle slopes to the southwest where they face the prevailing wind and steep slopes on the opposite side. NASA's Opportunity rover spent years exploring a small region of Meridiani Planum which has a rather ordinary appearance as seen by Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter here. Other portions of Meridiani are much more interesting with well-exposed layered bedrock eroded into strange patterns. An image of Hidden Valley's northern wall reveals layered rocks, some of which are cross-bedded. An area with some interesting pile of jumbled and broken rocks. This observation from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in the Southern Hemisphere shows many shallow pits in the bright residual cap of carbon dioxide ice also called Swiss cheese terrain. There is also a deeper circular formation that penetrates through the ice and dust. This might be an impact crater or it could be a collapsed pit. Much of Mars is covered by sand and dust, but in some places stacks of sedimentary layers are visible. In this image, exquisite layering is revealed emerging from the sand in southern Holden Crater. Sequences like these offer a window into Mars's complicated geologic history. Curiosity rover took this selfie in a location named Glen Etive. The two holes seen in the left foreground were drilled by the rover to analyze the chemical composition of rock samples by first powderizing them with the drill, then dropping the samples into a portable lab in its belly called Sample Analysis at Mars. A layer of dry ice covers the south polar layer deposits every winter. In the spring, gas created from heating of the dry ice escapes through ruptures in the overlying seasonal ice, entraining material from the ground below. The gas erodes channels in the surface, shown in this image, generally exploiting weaker material. Fans of dark material are bits of the surface carried onto the top of the seasonal ice layer and deposited in a direction determined by local winds. Mars's seasonal cap of carbon dioxide ice erodes many beautiful terrains as it sublimates every spring. In this image, we see troughs that formed a starburst pattern as channels branched out numerous times as they got further from the center. The troughs are believed to be formed by gas flowing beneath the seasonal ice to openings where the gas escapes, carrying along dust from the surface below. 
the dust falls to the surface of the ice in fan-shaped deposits. Spirit Rover took this detailed panorama of the inner basin, one of the rover's target destination while descending Husband Hill. An image of the surface of Mars taken by Viking Lander. The footpad of the Viking Lander is visible in the corner of the image. This patch of rocky Martian ground on the floor of Perseverance Valley on the inner slope of the western rim of Endurance Crater slopes steeply downhill from left to right. Some textures seen here including striations just above and parallel to the edge of a solar panel at far left may be due to abrasion by wind-driven sand. Researchers interpret them as possible signs of past winds blowing from right to left up and out of the crater, which currently hosts sand dunes on its central floor. A close-up of Pit Maiden, a small block of weathered sedimentary rock that is about 4 cm wide. This artist's concept is a simulation of what seismic waves from a Mars quake might look like as they move through different layers of the Martian interior. Earth isn't the only place that experiences quakes. Both the Moon and Mars have them as well. NASA sent the first seismometer to the Moon 50 years ago during the Apollo 11 mission. The agency's InSight lander brought the first seismometer to Mars in late 2018 and is called the Seismic Experiment for Interior Structure. The seismometer detected its first Mars quake on April 6, 2019. Quakes look and feel different depending on the material their seismic waves pass through. The dark stick-shaped features clustered on this Martian rock are about the size of grains of rice. The origin of the stick-shaped features is uncertain. One possibility is that they are erosion-resistant bits of dark material from mineral veins cutting through rocks in this area on lower Mount Sarp. An area in Bridger Basin that includes the locations where Curiosity rover drilled two targets called Big Sky and Greenhorn. Researchers selected this pair of drilling sites to investigate the nature of silica enrichment in the fracture zones of the area. This image shows strata exposed along the margins of the valleys in the Parump Hills region. The scale of layering increases upward, providing what's called a thickening upward trend. This is consistent with a variety of ancient environments, in particular those that involved water. The hills and troughs in this valley almost look like undulating waves. Curiosity rover captured this mosaic as it explored the clay bearing unit. At the top left corner is part of the Vera Rubin Ridge, and the rocky hill at the center left has been nicknamed Knock Farrell Hill. The science team is trying to figure out how this landscape formed over billions of years. At present, the clearest takeaway is that the clay bearing unit is softer than the ridge. The former has eroded into a valley between the ridge and Mount Sharp while the ridge has resisted erosion.
This image from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter shows a dune field in Chasma Boreali, which is a large trough that cuts into the North Polar ice cap. Some of the dunes in this image are quite long and sinuous with a slight bulge at one end like a head, giving it the appearance of a snake. However, most of the dunes visible here are of the type referred to as Barkan, which are characterized by their crescent shape. For this type of dunes, the mouth of the crescent points in the downwind direction, indicating that the winds are traveling east-west. The diverse dune morphologies here suggest that the wind direction changes over a very small area. This image from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was acquired to take a closer look at a circular feature that might be an impact structure on the south polar layered deposits. Measuring the sizes and frequency of impact craters provides a constraint on the edge of the landscape. However, craters in icy terrain are modified by processes that flatten and change them in such a manner that it is hard to say for sure if it had an impact origin. Some interesting looking rock formations on Mars. Honeycomb textured landforms in northwestern Hellas Planitia, which is part of one of the largest and most ancient impact basins on Mars. The cell-like sand ripples which are about 5 to 10 kilometers wide indicate wind erosion has played some role here. We also see distinctive exposures of bedrock that cut across the floor and wall of the cells. These resemble dikes which are usually formed by volcanic activity. Additionally, the lack of impact craters suggests that the landscape along with these features have been recently reshaped by a process or number of processes that may even be active today. Scientists have been debating on how these honeycomb features are created, theorizing from glacial events, lake formation, volcanic activity and tectonic activity to wind erosion. On the west left side of this image, fairly textbook looking bark and sand dunes sit atop the bedrock. Barkan dunes pointing in the opposite direction are just a few kilometers away to the east. In between these opposing Barkan dunes are star dunes. Barkan dunes form when sand moving wind is fairly unidirectional. Star dunes in contrast form when the sand moving wind comes from multiple directions. Not all at once, but from varying directions at different times of day or year. This picture was taken by the Viking Lander. The large rock just left to the center is about 2 meters wide and is called Big Joe. The top of the rock is covered with red soil and those portions of the rock not covered are similar in color to basaltic rocks on earth. Therefore this may be a fragment of a lava flow that was ejected by an impact crater. The part of the Lander that is visible in the lower left is the cover of the nuclear power supply. This is Roddy Crater, home to several large alluvial fans which formed as water moved sediment from the mountainous crater rim and deposited it onto the flatter crater floor. Alluvial fans are found on Earth, Mars and even Saturn's moon Titan. The fans built up over time during intense rainstorms or from melting snow. Due to the strong winds on Mars, the river channels that once carried water and sediment on the fan surfaces are now standing as raised ridges and platforms. A view of the Moru crater on Mars. This mosaic of images shows geological members of the Yellowknife Bay Formation. These rocks record superimposed ancient lake and stream deposits that offered past environmental conditions 
favorable for microbial life. Rocks here were exposed about 70 million years ago by removal of overlying layers due to erosion by the wind. When Phoenix Mars lander dug a trench called Dodo Goldilocks, clumps of bright material in the trench vanished over the course of four days, implying that they were composed of ice which sublimated following exposure. This view of a rock called Harrison merges images from two cameras on Curiosity rover to provide both color and microscopic detail. The remote microimager of the rover's ChemCam instrument obtained the details shown in the center of this view. The right eye telephoto lens camera of the rover's masked camera instrument obtained the color information and wider context. ChemCam's laser and spectrometers provided composition information. Harrison bears elongated light-colored crystals in a darker matrix. Some of the crystals are about 1 cm in size. Based on composition information gathered from an array of ChemCam laser shots on Harrison, the elongated crystals are likely feldspars and the matrix is pyroxene dominated. This mineral association is typical of basaltic igneous rocks. The texture provides compelling evidence for igneous rocks at Gale Crater. Some Dust Devils on Mars A Martian rock with some interesting looking textures. A wheel track cuts through a wind blown ripple of dusty sand in this image from Curiosity Mars rover. The view spans about 4 feet from left to right. The rover team planned this experiment to get a view of the inside of the ripple for assessment of particle sizes, distribution and composition. A series of five small holes arranged in a line in the left half of the image are where laser firings by Curiosity's ChemCam instrument were used for identifying chemical elements present. A hillside with thousands of wafer-thin layers of rocks on Mars. This rock outcrop shows the complex pattern of erosion that has taken place. These thin slabs of rocks projecting into the thin Martian air in gravity-defying way are less than one inch thick. Malaya Planum seen here is a polar region in the southern hemisphere of Mars, directly south of Hellas Basin. It contains the lowest point of elevation on the planet and ancient volcanoes of a certain type referred to as Pad Ray, with scalloped aged calderas. Malaya is also a low lying plain known to be covered in dust. Earth Phallus on Mars has attracted much attention because of the nature and diversity of the minerals identified by imaging spectrometers on Mars Express Orbiter. The spectrometers are capable of detecting specific minerals and mapping their spatial extent. It's a large ancient outflow channel on the margin of the southern highlands and northern lowlands. The spectrometers have detected clay minerals here that must have been deposited in a water-rich environment probably more than 4 billion years ago. For this reason, Marth Valley is one of the two candidate landing sites for the future Mars Express rover mission planned by the European Space Agency. Opportunity rover looking back at its landing spot within Eagle Crater after leaving tracks behind in the soil. 
This is where the rover began its journey. In early Martian summer at the time Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter acquired this image, the dunes are almost free of their seasonal ice cover. Only pockets of ice protected in the shade most of the day remain. The North Pole of Mars is surrounded by a vast sea of sand dunes. In this dune field, the dunes are covered by a seasonal cap of dry ice in the winter. An impact crater looking amusingly like a tadpole because of the valley that was carved by water that used to fill it. It is often difficult to differentiate between inlet and outlet channels, but water always flows downhill. In this particular case, it can be inferred that water is flowing downward because of the availability of the necessary terrain height information. When studying these images in detail, scientists can gain a better understanding of the strength of the flooding water that carved the channels and better understand the history of water activity in this region of Mars. Dust coated rock formation in Gale Crater. Spectacular wide angle mosaic views showing sloping buttes and layered outcrops within the Murray Buttes region on lower Mount Sharp. Cerberus Fossi is a steep-sided set of troughs cutting volcanic plains to the east of Elysium Mons. Steep slopes on Mars have active landslides, also called mass wasting, and here we see evidence for two types of activity. First, the light bluish boulders on the slope appear to originate at a layer of bedrock, also light blue in color near the top of the section. Second, the dark thin lines are recurring slope lineae probably due to mass wasting but composed of finer grained materials. This image shows clusters of buttes and mesas among flows south of western Cerberus Fossi. The shadow of InSight Lander's robotic arm moves over its heat probe known as the Mole. The Mole's mission objective is to take Mars's temperature from below the surface. <laughs> 